Before the video, a quick update on the Buy Tom Some New Gear campaign, because if you remember, ouch, yes, that happened. You folks have been incredibly generous. After just one week, my new gear is funded about at the 25% level. And I hate coming to you with my hat in hand, but YouTube, not exactly lucrative. And doing these high quality videos is pretty much a labor of love for me. So uh, because you've been so generous, I'm going to keep shooting with a DSLR, which is slow and cumbersome, but uh, you guys are worth it. And if anything good has come from this bad situation, it's that I found out I have some really great supporters. Thank you very much. How do automakers make vehicles desirable? Well, the word new always attracts a buyer's ear and unique design catches the eye. Adding stuff the competition lacks works too. And of course, a low price is critical. Has Nissan done all of that with the sixth generation Ultima? Well, it has to, since this car is fighting industry trends. People aren't buying sedans the way they used to. Ford is even getting out of the segment entirely to focus on crossovers. But really, people are still buying an awful lot of these. Plus, sedans share platforms with crossovers, so it seems smart to make both and sell as many vehicles as possible. Nissan's intention with Ultima is to, and I quote, re-energize the sedan segment in terms of design, driving feel, and advanced technologies. Unquote. That starts with available all-wheel drive to appeal to crossover shoppers on the fence. Automatic emergency braking is standard. There's crisp angular bodywork too, with the best application of the brand's V-Motion grille I've seen. The floating roof element doesn't look completely integrated to my eye. Maybe a black roof would help. And the gap from hood to fender could stand some narrowing, but overall the wider lower silhouette will appeal to many. An optional variable compression turbo 2.0-liter 4-cylinder, a first in the auto industry, replaces the outgoing V6. It raises or lowers the reach of the pistons to change the compression ratio. Remember, high ones are more efficient, low ratios deliver more power and torque. The 2.5-liter 4-cylinder I'm driving is essentially new. Some 80% of the parts have been changed out. It offers up 188 horsepower and 180 pound-feet of torque, both figures slightly higher than the outgoing engine. More so than many direct-injected engines. Hear that? Sort of a faint diesel-like sound. This being a Nissan, it uses a continuously variable transmission. This Platinum model has no simulated manual shift mode. Want that and paddle shifters? Go with the SR edition. Obviously, it would be nice to have the extra power of the turbo engine, but I don't think most owners will really need it. Zero to 60 miles an hour is a little over eight seconds, which is average, but it does feel snappier than that. Enthusiasts will want the turbo engine, but all-wheel drive is only available with the 2.5 liter I'm driving. Most Ultimas will be placed into family duty. Mom and dad won't have to suffer a dull driving dynamic. I prefer my steering weight a little bit heftier than Ultima's, but this thing corners pretty well. Maybe not quite as compelling as Mazda 6, but it's a fun car to drive. The lower profile tires on the Platinum's 19-inch wheels allow some sharp bumps through, making the ride quality a little flinty. The sport-oriented SR gets a firmer suspension, so pay close attention to that on the test drive. I famously complain about the dynamics of continuously variable transmissions. Usually they're very rubbery. This one feels pretty much like a regular gearbox. Kudos to the Nissan engineers. There is some droning in a few conditions, but overall it's well done. Ultima isn't luxury car hushed, but it's pretty quiet, and the dashboard is on the low side, so you can actually see pretty well out of this car. A couple backseat passengers thought the road noise was a little high. Maybe there's less sound insulation back there. Pro Pilot Assist, Nissan's excellent suite of semi-autonomous driving tech, is standard on the SV, SL, and Platinum models. Check out a full assessment of it in my Nissan Rogue video. Ultima adds rear automatic braking, so the back 
bumper won't get all dinged up, at least by the owner. Nice that Ultima is available with all-wheel drive. The only other two in class that get it are Subaru Legacy and Ford Fusion. And of course, the Fusion is going away. The front drive Ultima's average EPA fuel economy rating of 32 miles per gallon is one or two MPG less than a comparable Accord or Camry, a whopping seven MPG better than the Fusion. Obviously, the all-wheel drive on my tester drops efficiency. A lot of cars are getting automatic engine start-stop systems. The Ultima does not. Exterior design is important to many, but this is what owners stare at day in and day out, slogging through traffic. No one will think this is carbon fiber or that the wood comes from real trees. The surround by the interface screen looks like an afterthought. It's a nice enough cabin though. Stuff you touch feels good. One might expect a stitched dash on the Platinum model since there's one on the SR. Both old and new USB ports future-proof the Ultima. The controls are especially well laid out. I never found myself searching for anything. And passengers commented on how comfortable Nissan's zero-gravity seats were. These are heated but not vented. The user interface is definitely an improvement over the rudimentary one found in older Nissans, and it's hard to complain about it when it's fairly easy to personalize the experience by dropping the features wanted onto specific pages. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are here too. Want a big panoramic sunroof? Shop Camry, Optima, and Sonata for that. You've been uh, staying out of trouble? I might have dropped the uh, sunshade messing up your driving footage. Oh, that was you. And uh, your camera last week falling over might have had something to do with that. But let's talk about the back seat. It's roomy and comfortable back here. Knee room, foot room, looks all good. The wheelbase is nearly two inches longer now, and that helps my size 11s. So does a drive shaft tunnel that's not too big. Both USB ports are here as well. I don't get heated seats back here though, darn. But again, it is roomy, maybe more so than some crossovers. Two adults will find enough space to stretch out and three will be okay as long as they're not too large or the trip too long. Some trunk lids can be opened by kicking under the bumper, others by simply standing next to it for a while. This one, you have to use the latch. Oh, or the key fob. Even with the all-wheel drive mechanics that take up space, Nissan provides a physical spare tire. While the seat backs don't flop down on their own, it's handier to have releases in the back than open the back door and drop them from there. This opens up options to carry longer things, but there's a reason why crossovers are popular since it's easier to get large boxes into this space. Not that the Ultima has a small trunk, it doesn't. In fact, very few sedans hold as much of my measurement metric. That's an impressive Eight packs. None of Ultima's attributes are worth much if the price is high. It starts at $24,645 with shipping for a base S version. Move up a model if you don't want covers over steel wheels. The all-wheel drive Platinum model here retails for $34,000. Some competitors offer a little more bang for the buck, but the Nissan offers things that others don't. The new Ultima, especially with all-wheel drive, could keep a few shoppers from moving to crossovers, even if it doesn't completely re-energize the sedan market single-handedly. For those interested in more power by way of the variable compression turbo engine, it adds three to four thousand dollars to the price depending on model. And again, it can't be had with all-wheel drive, which would be helpful in putting that extra power down to the pavement. Hope you got something out of my look at the all new 2019 Nissan Altima. If this video looked a little bit different to you, here's why. Yeah, that's my main video camera. It augured into the pavement. I'm pretty sure it's a total loss. So while I'm trying to figure out what to buy next, I am shooting with a DSLR, which is cumbersome and it's very distracting to me, so they may not be quite as sharp. I think that's the real reason why the visor was down, not Evil Twin. He takes credit for everything. Anyways, if you're feeling particularly generous, please, please feel free to contribute to a new camera system for me. Uh, the one that I'm thinking about getting is $15,000. Uh, you know, quality doesn't come cheap, and I know you guys really appreciate the video quality. So 
Anyways, anything you could do would help. Uh, I'm not proud of begging, but uh, I just did a kitchen remodel and uh, I don't really have a lot of money. <laughs> Thanks for anything you can do. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.